<laughs> the Kawanga Festival is back for its third year in celebration of new stories and storytellers. Based in Auckland's home of Māori Theatre Te Pō, with performances, workshops and a fun-filled whānau day, there is something for absolutely everyone. Here to tell us more, please welcome to the cafe and the Kareen, Aroa Aoro and Jason Temete. Oh, oh, what a line oh, oh, That's good oh, looking oh, back. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you, you lead uh, Te Pō and you're the festival director. So yes. tell us a little bit about what it actually is. Well, Kawanga Festival is our third time that we've been doing it, our third year. It first started in 1990, and that was yep, and that was from Matua Don Selwyn. They first did the they did the very first one. It's to make a platform for Māori theatre and performing arts and arts outside of Matariki. Matariki is really popular, but um, during Kawanga Festival in the September, it's another time of year to okay, celebrate. Okay, there's obviously a bit of gaps, isn't there? For, yeah. for 1990 was the first one. This is the third. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so we really wanted to revitalise it once we got our theatre tepo. And Araha and Jason, you both have had your playwrights chosen to be workshop. How has that been, Araha? I think it's a luxury as a playwright to have the opportunity to workshop a play in a development season and also pay people. We've got support from Creative New Zealand and Tipo. And I, I really applaud Tipo and Ben Tainui for taking mm. the challenge to. Um, to have the opportunity to have more Māori voices in the theatre because that's very lacking mm. at the it moment. Is. Mm. Jason, what does workshopping actually mean for the people that aren't in the know? What is workshopping a play? Uh, basically it's an opportunity for a playwright to write a script or draft of a script and, and explore it with the actors. So, you know, some of the ideas that perhaps aren't completely fully realised in the script mm. um, and opening that up to having a director and a dramaturg who's an advisor on the script writing process and a bunch of actors to, to have a go and see what it feels like, see what it sounds like, mm. see if it's working. Um, and also the overall arc of the piece, you know, the, the whole show itself. I That's just, exciting. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's really I exciting. did wonder what a dramaturg was. I saw that word and went, what oh, on earth? Don't, don't, don't even know what <laughs> yeah. it is. Yeah, that, that's a big question. It's a good, yeah, it's a good question and you, lots of New Zealand are asking it. But they're like a help person. Eh? Mm. They, they help. There's someone who understands the craft of writing mm. and, right. and, you know, the, the kind of like, the easiest way to explain it, I guess, is, is like an English teacher at school that's talking to you about how to write your essay. Mm. Um, the dramaturg is that person who can say what you need in this gap is is this moment for this character to continue their journey, um, and that's mm. not there. And so they point out those little holes for you to fix up. Wow. Um, and often it's it's purely their opinion too. You know, they um, they can suggest something, but <clears throat> the writers we can decide not to agree, or we can we can challenge that. That. And, and that's why it's a workshop, Absolutely. I guess. Yeah. yeah, get the best yeah. ideas. Um, yeah. Let's talk about what your play is about. Uh, quite personal for you, Araha, your one, is it? Well, I'm personal in the sense that um, it's about the provocation defence, which is no longer in law. In, in, in the past, um, people had used it um, when they killed someone, downgraded their murder charge into manslaughter. Um, so provocation says that a reasonable person can lose self-control if they were provoked. So, um, you know, it was quite common for husbands in the crimes of passion who had killed their wives to use it. And it was very common for older gay men who were murdered um, by younger lovers, mm. uh, the lovers to actually use the provocation to get off murder. Wow. And so, I mean, it's personal in the sense that I grew up in that generation remembering re reading about David McNee, um, reading about Ronald um, James Brown, older men who died in this way. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to um, reflect on a history of gay history and legal history in this country, and that's what made me inspired mm -hmm. to write this. What about you, Jason? Uh, yeah, well, my, my story comes from a very personal place too, um, but mine is called Little Black Bitch and it is about a boy called Rangi who finds a stray dog following him around and his mates thinking they're funny call it Toto. So he does the only natural thing and he adopts her but the more that he feeds her the more his own Toto, his blood, burns deeper and darker than ever before. Ooh, Ooh I want to see what it ends like now. Yeah. So it's, a, it's a thriller, uh, and that's the way I'm writing it, and I'm quite excited about that. That's, that's a huge challenge, which the workshop is going to give me the opportunity to really explore. Uh, thrillers on film often rely a lot on camera angles and, yeah. and people just appearing out of nowhere and that sort of thing. So the stage version of putting it live is a challenge. Oh, yep. Thank you all so much thank for coming you. in thank today. Yeah, uh, for awesome. the full Kuwanga Festival programme, you can check out the Pose Facebook page or head to the website.